Hey guys, this guy here from YCG, your casual gamer. In the following episode, I'm going to show you how to work with sound attenuations, how to create depth inside your sound. Right now, both of these sounds don't have any attenuation settings set up, so when I come inside the level, you can see that we hear both of them like it was a 2D sound. Now I'm going to go ahead and allow the attenuation, which I already did implement. So one of them is the blueprint. So I'm going to show you how to add it inside a blueprint and how to add it as an ambient sound. And also how to create the general asset for the sound attenuation. And now the result will be this over here. Now that it's enabled, you see that I need to get close to hear the fire. If I get far, I don't hear it. Same thing for the pillar. If I'm behind the wall, I barely hear the pound. Same thing for the fire over here. So stay tuned. All right, so first thing first, uh, I grabbed the particle system from the starter content. They give us this nice fire over here. So just for my example, I, draw, I uh, brought it inside the sea. And if you're wondering where I'm standing, I'm, I'm actually on top of our level over here. And I created a few cubes just to uh, help in my example. And I dragged one of our trap that we created in the last episode over on top. Now, first way to add attenuation or a sound to your scene is with the ambient sound. So you just go ahead and grab it inside and drag it inside your scene. Make sure it's on top of the fire so that you can select it due to the smoke. And uh, there you go. So now to change the attenuation, well first off, let's give it a sound. There's a sound also in Unreal that I choose is the fire cue over here. And you can just drag it inside the sound over here and there you go. So the first thing you're going to notice when you give a sound to the uh, uh, ambient sound, you're going to notice that there's a small sphere that appears and a bigger sphere around. These are the attenuation radius. So when you're inside the small sphere, you're going to hear the sound at 100% of the value you've given it. One being 100%. And the second circle is the fall off. So as you're walking towards the end of the circle, it's going to be less and less loud and when you walk out you don't hear the sound at all it makes sense now let's say you want to play with that attenuation simple enough you just have to go scroll down inside the sound and override the attenuation by clicking like this now you're gonna have all these settings over here that are gonna come and I'm gonna go through them uh, to most of them with you guys now like always I do a lot of research before uh, doing an episode for you guys to make sure that I give you as much put as much information as possible so that way when you come back to this video everything is there laid out on the golden plate for you guys to learn now if I find inside my research better videos or people that explain some of the areas uh, better than me or already super well I'm just gonna give you a link to them so it's easier for you guys to go check so that's that's the case for the distance algorithm for the distance algorithm the Unreal Engine uh, for uh, documentation already explains it really well, so I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you guys to go check if you want to learn how to use the uh, distance algorithm. Same thing for the Enable uh, Listener Focus and the Occlusion. Now, I'm going to give you roughly uh, pinpoint what it is, but I found a video online by uh, this guy named Bartosz on YouTube and he explains it really thoroughly and also he's using 4.18 4, uh, which is an higher version than me I'm using 4.14 and there's there's even stuff that uh, was added in the future uh, version that he explains inside his video so but basically what the listener focus does is that when I'm looking at the sound if I start looking away from the sound I stop hearing the sound so it's like a way to like really like it says listener focus and for the occlusion is uh, let's say uh, there was an object between me and the fire how good would you hear the fire like do you hear it a little bit not a lot does it, does the frequency change that's what you would use the occlusion for and roughness but if you want to know more check out the link in the description below now for the rest I'm gonna explain step by step with you guys so first thing you see on the menu is the attenuate which is like we said the radius so the radius for the fall off and the uh, middle sphere now you see the default setting they give you is a bit exaggerated I don't think that from down there you would hear the fire so let's put it down to maybe 1000 for the fall off and 200 for the uh, radius right away now the second thing is 
I'm going to talk to you about the attenuation shape. Just so that when you understand these two things, we can move on. The shape is really like you see over here, it's all spheres. So it would be a round sound effect. Now, if you choose a box, let's say, it's the same thing. You choose the extent of the inner box. So let's say I put it to 200 to 200, 200. You're going to see that there's a box that I've been created over here and there's a box outside. So that would be the fall off. And when you're inside the small box, you would hear the sound at 100%. Now you use these shape for different uh, uses like this one would be better for like a square room where you want to make sure that on the other side of the room there's a soundproof glass that you don't hear anything so that's what you would use this for as for the uh, circular sound which is the one we're going to use that is better for an open area or like we're using over here where there's sound going all around these little asset over here so you want to keep this more general so Next thing over here is the spatialize. What does spatialize say? If I look at it, it says that it enables the sound to be positioned in 3D. What does that mean? Because right away you notice that the sound is already placed in a 3D world. So what does that mean? So okay, so let's jump inside the level and let's explain. So I'm, I'm looking directly at the fire. Spatialize, what it does is it plays with your stereo system. So if you have a stereo system hooked up and you're listening to the video, it's going to work. If you don't, then you might not understand what I'm talking about. Right now I'm looking directly at the fire, so you're going to hear the sound coming out of your left and the right speaker. If I start looking to the left, the sound should be shifting to the right, and if I start looking to the left, uh, to the right, sorry, then it's going to shift to the left speaker. So that's what spatialized do. It localizes where it is to create this illusion of a sound that you would hear in real life going around your, your living space. Now if, if I take it off, right away you're going to notice that this effect is gone. If I look to the left, still plays in both my speakers, on the right, same thing. Now let's leave it on, since in our example we need it. Now to continue down, we already explained the radius, the fall off, the non-specialized radius. This works really well when you're using the Spatialize. In our case, we have a nice fire over here. When you're standing close to the fire, it doesn't matter if you look left or right, you're going to hear the sound as a whole inside your head. So you want to be able to have that effect. Right now, the radius is set to zero. So if I go close and I'm go, I go inside the sphere over here where the sound should be at 100%, you're going to see that I'm inside the fire. And if I look left, right, you can see that the sound is still trying to jump from left to right ear and we don't want that so that's where you would choose to bring the non-specialized radius radius to your minimum radius over here so that way when you're inside the level and you're right inside the bubble you're going to see that looking left or right the sound is going to come from the two speakers and if you walk away then it's going to use the specialized feature to localize where the sound is coming from so that's a nice little feature over here. Now the 3D stereo spread, it's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but I don't really use this method. I mean, you can achieve really um, realistic sound without this. Uh, if you guys found uh, find a better use than me, I, I haven't found anything that, to be explained. It's, it's like it says over here. So this one between left and right stereo channels when stereo assets specialize. And it's just, it's just that that's it, it's the distance. How far do you want the distance to be for each speaker? Now, let's jump off to the attenuation with the low pass filter. For the low pass filter, when you use this, it's with the frequencies. So I have to enable it. You can have the, uh, so the way that the uh, human hearing is works is from, the range is from 20, and I, I think to 20,000 hertz. That's Unless you have superhuman hearing and you can hear be further than this, then kudos to you. But I'm pretty normal. And that's where I stop hearing sounds uh, when they go above 20,000 and under 20. Now, this is how it works. So you have the minimum radius, which would be your radius over here. So we set this to 200 and the other one to 1,000 in our case. And just to make it uh, really exaggerating, when you're in the minimum radius, you should hear all the frequencies, which makes sense. If you want, if you if you're far, 
in the max, then you want to hear less. So let's put this to like a ridiculous amount, like 500. And let's see how that works. So if I jump inside the level, you're going to notice that if I'm close, I hear everything from the fire. I hear the fire fizzle, the crackling, the, uh, the smoke. And when I start walking away, you're going to notice that some sounds are not heard anymore. And this works really well when you're doing a scene like you're outside of a house and you're looking at the fire and some sounds are not going through the wall. You would use this kind of frequency and it creates that illusion of effect that it works really well to create a 3D space. So that's it for you guys. That's how you, uh, that, that's your tutorial on attenuation. I hope this enlightens you a lot. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to uh, answer them as thorough as I can. Now for the uh, how to implement the attenuation, I'll show you two ways to uh, use them. You have the first way is to make an asset. So you can do a sound attenuation asset and call it general, let's say. And when you double click inside, you're going to notice right away that you have all your settings that we just talked about right now. So if I wanted to for the fire, I wanted to make a attenuation setting that, w w that would work for all of my fire, let's say 200, 1200 was what I wanted. I could just save and get out of there and when I reach inside the level, grab my sound over here, instead of having to do all the settings that I did over here, I could have not override the uh, attenuation and just select my general and put it inside play. And it would be that easy. I couldn't even do that with my blueprints. Now the second way to do it is my favorite, is with blueprints. So uh, if you're not a follower and you don't have the trap that we have here and you have a blueprint that you want to add it to, you can follow along, but I'm going to be showing my followers how to add it to our trap that we built together. But I'm still going to go step by step, so if, if you have a blueprint you want to add it to, it's going to work nevertheless. So is it your blueprint? Go open the blueprint. So first thing I did is I added a component in audio component and I called it, in our case, it's a trap. So trap sound effects, sound effects. And grab it and make sure that it's in coordinates with the uh, trap body. In our case, it's because the trap body is the movement. So you want, you want to make sure the sound moves with the uh, trap. Control drag the trap inside and you're gonna make, uh, you're just gonna play it as soon as the trap hits the floor. So that's what we're gonna do, like that. Uh, connect the two over here. Now, to keep the sound customizable, like I like doing my 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 things, you're going to connect the set sound over here. And if you don't have that inside the construction script, you can just again control drag the newly uh, created audio component, and from there just do set sound. And you're going to have the motion over here, the node, that you can just drag out of there and make a new variable which I did, called it a custom sound effects. And all I did is when I created it, I made sure to make it editable by clicking the little eye icon. And now what does that do is that inside the trap over here, if you already have your sound, you could just put it there and it would work all the time, but you can override the attenuation over here. How cool is that? So if I, if I know my settings are 200, let's say, uh, eight, 800 for this and 200 for the specialized, I compile and save this and when I get out you're gonna see that on my trap the sound is already there with attenuation now all I need to do is put my sound in so I already have a sound over here I created is a pillar stump if you don't have it it's gonna be in the description below like always it's a free sound I'm giving you guys that you can use in everyday project and you don't even need to give me attribution for it and uh, last thing you have to do is just set the sound to the correct measure I want it to start from here. And now what's cool by doing it inside a blueprint is I already set my settings once. I go control uh, alt drag copies and there you go. You have yourself three traps set up and you could populate your level like that. So if I jump inside the level, you're going to see that as soon as they hit the floor, they hit, we hear the attenuation. If I'm too far, I barely hear it as I come closer. I hear them. Now the last thing you need to know when you add the only down, the only little thing you need to do is when you add a sound to your blueprint, I forgot to do that, go back inside your blueprint, make sure to 
take off the auto activation. I always forget and it really bugs me. If it's a music and you want it to auto activate then it's fine. I, but I don't know if you noticed but as soon as I got inside the level I heard the spark. But it's that it shouldn't be happening. You want to call upon the sound and then and then it plays. Now if I go back inside the seed, everything should work perfectly. And there you have it. So hope you enjoy this. Uh, next episode we're going to be cleaning up our level, getting ready for our last episode for the season. So see you soon. Have a good day.